welcome to the panel, uh, our panel, the library, your Swiss Army knife for getting it all done. Uh, so just to let everyone know, this is gonna be, this is recorded, this is being recorded. It's also being transcribed live as well as live streamed on YouTube uh, so that folks can watch it later and get a refresher on all of the information that we're gonna be sharing today. So my name is Caitlin Maxwell. I'm the student engagement librarian um, here at Western Libraries. And I'm gonna be sharing some great resources on how you can get support for your assignments, uh, just student life in general, as well as technology, all sorts of things. So it's gonna really be your, your multi-purpose tool for getting it all done, uh, especially as you navigate being a student online, as well as you navigate, and also as you navigate being a freshman and a first year college student. So, with that being said, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, go through all the panelists. And then as folks think of questions, please feel free to uh, drop them in the Q&A. And uh, we have someone monitoring the Q&A and they'll keep a list of all the questions. And then we'll get to, um, after all the panelists are done, we'll get to the, the question part of the panel. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with our first panelist, Stephanie Morgan, take it away. Hi, I'm Stephanie Morgan. I use she, her pronouns, um, and I supervise all the students at the circulation desk in the libraries. Circulation is a place where you can get help finding materials and picking up holds, as well as checking out materials. We are also a great place to ask questions. We are happy to be the starting point for all your library and campus inquiries. Um, and currently we're available by phone and email. We are also the place that houses all the library reserves and reserves are electronic and physical materials uh, that are needed for coursework. This may include any library or instructor owned text, articles, videos, audio recordings, and other relevant resources that support classroom instruction. A list of all these materials that are available for your class can be found on your Canvas page for that class. Uh, physical reserves aren't going to be available this fall due to COVID-19, but please always check with circulation to see if we have uh, access to what you need in our physical collection or if we can help find it somewhere else. In addition to our collections, Western Libraries also partners with all the other nearby libraries and schools meaning that any materials from the Bellingham Public Library, Whatcom County Library System, Northwest Indian College, Whatcom Community College, and Bellingham Technical College can be returned to Western, and any of our material can be returned to them. When our buildings are open, the circulation desk is a place to turn in uh, and to check for all lost and found items. We get everything from cell phones and textbooks to earrings and shoes. The circulation desk is also the place to reserve and check out group study room keys when we're open. Uh, group study rooms can be checked out by two or more people and are a great place to practice group presentations or work collaboratively. Um, and these services will be available again once the buildings reopen. And our most popular service is our hold shelf. If you place a hold on an item through the library's catalog, It'll be waiting for you um, at the circulation desk and you can place holds um, for our summit items, which we hope to resume offering uh, soon. Our summit is our partnership with 38 libraries across War Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. And then we can also place holds through our interlibrary loan system, Iliad. And we partner with schools all around the world for this. Um, and now I'll show a quick little video of how to place a hold in our library catalog. Hi, in this brief video, I'm gonna show how you can request print items for curbside pickup or mail delivery from the Western Libraries collection. Starting from the Western Libraries homepage, go ahead and search for the items that you're looking for. If you're doing general searches where you're just looking for lots of different items and trying to see what kind of books we might have on a subject, it can be helpful to change these limiters so that you're focusing on Western items rather than including our summit partners since those are not yet available. When you found a book that you want to request, go ahead and click on the title so that you can open up the item record and you'll want to make sure that you get signed in if you're not signed in already. Once you're signed in, you'll see that there's an option to request WWU copy. At this point, you'll see two op options, one for curbside pickup, 
where you can pick it up Tuesdays or Fridays, 10 a.m. to noon, or you can have it mailed to your home address. Once you've chosen your preferred option, go ahead and click Request, and your request will get sent in, and we'll process it as quick as possible. Uh, just keep in mind that we do have a limited amount of staff that can be in the building at a time, so it may take a little bit longer than you would normally expect. All right, and now I'll hand it back over to Caitlin. So now we have our slides back up, and next we have Pippa from the studio. Thank you, Pippa. Yeah, hi, so my name is Pippa. I also use she, her pronouns. Um, the studio covers basically anything that you're working on that has words in it. Um, doesn't matter what subject, doesn't matter what level, we can probably do it. Um, so at the studio, we think that nobody should have to do projects alone. We all do much better when we can bounce ideas off of other people. Um, and because all of us bounce research and writing ideas together all the time, we've built up a massively huge number of tricks and strategies that you can use to make research and writing easier, not to mention other things like reading faster, smoothing out group projects, and also applying to majors, uh, all things that we all have to do at some point. Um, but the most important thing that we do is probably helping people figure out how to customize their own strategies so that it would suit your own learning style. Um, so you can drop in to use the studio as an online study space anytime you want to. Um, talk with a studio assistant if you get stuck or if you get tired of working alone. Um, some people even like to use us as like accountability so that they can stay focused on their projects. Um, and we have several different ways that you can choose to work with us if you're wanting to study or wanting to ask a question. Um, so you can choose between them all. Um, some people like to chat with us online or text us a question on their phone. Some people prefer to show us what show us what they're doing on Zoom. Um, some people like to send drafts as they get to the next stage as they've written something out. Um, and then you can also um, sign up to work with a partner if you'd like to for the quarter, like if you're focusing on a really big goal, for example. Um, so try out one of those ways that seems useful to you. Um, check it out and make your life easier in the long run. It'll be very, uh, very helpful. Okay. Thank you, Pippa. Okay, so up next we have Katrina from the Tutoring Center. Thank you, Katrina. Hi, I'm Katrina Buckman. I'm the head of the Tutoring Center and also use she, her pronouns. Um, and like Pippa said, you shouldn't have to work alone. And it's really so helpful when you can find someone else to work with. Um, in the Tutoring Center, you'll find many different ways you can collaborate with either other students or with tutors and peer advisors um, who are students that work at the tutoring center. Um, so at the tutoring center, you'll find uh, an online now virtual learning community um, where, where you can work with other classmates, you can work with a tutor, you can join a study group, or you can boost some of your study skills. Um, our drop-in tutoring covers mostly math and science GURs. Um, those are the general undergraduate requirements that all Western students need to take. Um, and so if you're taking one of those classes and you're looking for sub some support, drop-in tutoring is a great place to start. Um, study groups are also great. Those are more of an opportunity for you to work with other students in your class or in other sections of your course and you'll have the support and guidance of a tutor who will mostly just be encouraging you to verbalize some of the concepts that you're working on with your other group members. Um, we have something new now um, that, we, that are, we're just introducing as of this summer, which is appointments. So if some of our drop-in times don't work for you, then you're welcome to make an appointment. Um, for those of you who aren't taking math and science GUR courses, we have study skill support available for any class at any time. And that is, um, some, there's some great best, best practices and strategies for time management, for active learning, reading, test taking, um, and other types of metacognitive strategies to make sure that you're really understanding your work and you know what you need to get out of it. Um, those are also available by appointment. So we're just gonna check out on our website now. And um, if you go to our website, which I'm gonna bring up in just a moment, 
you will find how to make an appointment, how to connect with a tutor, a chat, um, or how to connect via Zoom. So on our website, when we're open, which these are our summer hours, but uh, our fall hours are Mondays through Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., Fridays from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Sundays from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Anytime you're during those hours that you come to our website, you'll see this chat with the TC. And if you click on that, that will connect you with one of our peer advisors or tutors. If those times don't work for you and you'd like to make an appointment with one of our tutors outside of that, you can click on schedule an appointment. And if you stick around our website long enough, you'll get a pop-up box asking you if you need some support. Um, on our, if you go to our services and drop-in tutoring, our services menu is located on the left and uh, drop-in hours is the third item down. If you click there, you'll see a list of all of the courses that we support and the times that we are open to support those courses. So for math, chemistry, and physics, we're open almost every time that we, we have a tutor on for those almost every time that we're open. But for some of our other classes, some of our availability is more limited. So definitely be sure to check our drop-in schedule, which will be posted on our website under services drop-in hours. Okay. Okay. And that's all I have on the tutoring center, but we hope to see you there. Thank you, Katrina. So up next, we have Kona from Disability Access Center. And just a second as Kona uh, starts sharing their screen and we'll, we'll get started in just a second here. Sure, and actually I don't have a, I'm not gonna share anything. Our website might be changing a bit. So um, okay. I don't wanna, yeah, have something shared and then it be changed on a person. So um, my name's Kona. I'm a accommodation manager over at the Disability Access Center. Um, our office serves any student with a disability. Um, you, if you have a disability, you're eligible to, for services at our office. Um, I think last year we served just under 2,000 students through our office, and um, we serve, we have the ability to help students in all aspects of the student experience, whether it's uh, academically, in the classroom, uh, housing, if you are in a class or program that leaves campus, field work. Um, so, Pretty much um, any part of the student experience we can help out with. Um, some questions that come up often are like just how do you get the accommodation process started and there's a few things you'll need to do and one of those things is submit an application on our website and I've put that website in the chat and it's also going to be on a slide that will be available um, to you at the end of the presentation. So you go to our website uh, which is disability.wwu.edu um, you can also call our office at 360-650-3083, um, and we'd be able to give you a hand uh, with filling out an application. Um, also, information you might want is any previous accommodation information. Um, also, any documentation from a care provider if you do have that. Um, if you don't have any of those things, that's fine. Um, you can still call our office and make an appointment to meet with an accommodation manager, and we'll be able to help you through the process even without those, um, those documents. Um, uh, another good question that folks ask are what accommodations are available? And something to keep in mind is that we don't necessarily have a list of, like a menu list of accommodations. It really is based on what barriers a student experiences based on their disability. And that will determine what accommodation or modification we might make um, to allow full access to a class or to housing or to whatever the student is trying to uh, achieve, whatever their goals are. So I often tell students, um, just come to college, come to class, come to school and um, pursue what you wanna pursue. And if you come across a barrier, then our office um, is the place to come to figure out, well, how, how can we get you involved in full participation in those, in those programs or activities? Um, because we're doing a lot of remote learning, um, a question that folks, I'm getting some, some lot, just I guess a lot of people are asking questions around remote learning. And one of them is, do accommodations apply to remote learning? And the answer to that uh, is yes. 
And it goes along with what I had just previously said about how accommodations will be, uh, they're evaluated based on the given situation. And so if you, if you have a barrier, even in a remote learning setting, we'd work to figure out how to alleviate that. And so it's very much applicable in the remote learning and online learning. So um, I think that's about it for now. And if you have any other questions, just feel free to contact our office. Thank you, Kona. Okay, so up next we have AJ from Student Technology Center. So take it away, AJ. Woohoo! Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm AJ Barce. I'm one of the managers of the Student Technology Center. And normally, I usually have my normal stick that you know we're on the second floor of Haggard Hall, but unfortunately, we are closed. But that does not mean the STC is closed. We have moved and pivoted uh, to online, and as such, I have some resources for everybody to kind of keep in the back of their minds should they run into any technical snags. So if you go to stc.ww.edu, our website's going to be updated uh, pretty much on a daily basis these days because you know COVID. Um, but at the bottom you'll see the uh, what our, our hours of operation are going to be uh, through the quarter and stuff. The biggest thing that I want to point out is while we're open, uh, and even when we're not, you have our live support chat, which will show up um, uh, at the bottom of your, your screen. And this allows you to chat during business hours to any one of our, our student staff. We have about 20, 25 uh, students and staff this year, and they'll be able to answer your question live. So if you got something, even if it's as simple as, we get this a lot, are you open? The answer is yes. And one of my crew will jump in and, and answer whatever your tech questions are. Also out of this, if you run into a, a technical snag and you need somebody to help walk you through things, um, all of our crew is equipped with TeamViewer and also Teams and all of the tech goodies uh, that allow for my crew to help interface with any student's uh, machine, whether that be a PC or a Mac or a Linux box, so that if you need that hands-on training that you used to get when you came up to our, our wonderful front desk on the second floor of Haggard Hall, we're going to be kind of mimicking it digitally. So that's one of our resources so that you can still get the same one-to-one -one or peer-to-peer -peer, uh, tutorial help that you might have once had in the physical realm. Now, in the digital realm, the other thing that we used to do a lot of is workshops. So this year we have been working uh, to digitize all of our workshops and put it into the wonderful, miraculous place known as Canvas. So if you are looking for training for uh, any of the applications that you see on a typical ATUS machine, um, such as, you know, your faculty makes you have to I don't know, do something in Excel and you don't want to completely fake it. You can come in and self-enroll into our course and pick any of the modules uh, and just go through it. Basically, our crew is created individual trainings based off of the application as well as the skill. And this is kind of a big change for the STC. Now you don't have to kind of sit through an hour or an hour and a half workshop just to learn one little thing that you, you need to learn. Um, you can jump directly to a specific attribute of uh, an app. So for instance, if you needed something, I just picked on Teams because you know everybody's working uh, remotely these days. And let's say you needed to know how to do something as simple as just sending a voicemail or accessing something. So no longer do you have to kind of go through an entire sit down training in this digital environment to get the skills that you need. Uh, and then also for faculty, if your, your faculty if you, uh, is able to take any of our modules and integrate it directly into a course. So there's one of two avenues that you might be getting training from the STC, from your faculty or directly from us. To access the, the Canvas course, all you need to do is self-enroll. And the self-enroll link is really simple. It's bit.ly slash STC Canvas. And that'll take you directly to the enrollment. And anybody in the Western community can do this. Students, staff, faculty, because we just want everybody to learn and be cooler online. So, Caitlin, back to you. OK, thank you, AJ. Let me get my screen up here. All right, so up next, uh, looks like we've got, sorry, it looks I, I thought we were in a different order, but we've got Dennis from MAPS, if you're ready, Dennis. Hi everyone, my name is Dennis Matthews. I am the manager of the MAP collection. Uh, just a little bit about the collection. Uh, we have over 75,000 individual sheet maps in the collection. We also have a um, 
small collection of globes, reference materials, atlases, as well as uh, access to uh, numerous online resources, which I'll talk about a little bit uh, here um, when we get through the slides. Uh, types of maps that we have in the collection include USGS topographic maps, Canadian topographic maps, nautical charts, recreation maps, geologic maps. So we have a pretty large selection of different types of maps that um, you have access to in the collection. Uh, as far as the, um, you know, I have a slide on when to use maps and why uh, you can use maps. Uh, I give different examples of the um, why you use maps, but I want to focus a little bit on when you when to use maps. So inevitably, you will have uh, classes, uh, writing classes, um, writing assignments, presentations, stuff like that. So. Um, you know, depending whether you're in English, geology, environmental science, uh, history, for example, uh, think about using maps as a way to help uh, articulate some of the, you know, what you're trying to convey in your reports. So um, now as far as research assistance goes, what we can do for you, um, there's a couple of ways that you can reach us and um, ways to get help. So the first one is you can contact, contact us via email or you can uh, call us uh, with voicemail. So we are here remotely, even though we're not here in the building. If you choose to do your own sort of research, you have a couple of options. You can use OneSearch, which, the, which is the library's online catalog. Uh, what you can do there is you can uh, type in your name geographic place followed by the word maps. And then once you get your search results, then you can limit by uh, a physical map, online map, uh, where the map is located, time period. So there's lots of different ways that you can limit you know, your search. Uh, also, if you do find a physical map in the collection, uh, there are scanning services available for uh, students. So just send us the uh, information that the map that you find or maps that you find, and you know we can scan those maps for you. Now there might be copyright restrictions, so depending on the map, you know we'll we'll have to see what what's available. Uh, another option for you is to use um, uh, our online resources page from the map collection. Uh, we have uh, a number of local, state, and federal. Um, uh, resources available for students that deal with different cartographic materials. So depending on what you need, there might be something available for you out there. Again, if you have questions, you can always reach out to us and we'll be happy to help you. And finally, if you want to learn more about the map collection, you can always click our uh, link, which you have there, and that'll take you to the map collections uh, landing page. And from there, you can learn a little bit more about the map collection, or if you need to contact us, again, uh, there's our email as well as our phone numbers. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Okay, so up next, we have Rachel Thompson, who's going to talk about heritage resources. Hey guys, I'm Rachel, obviously. I use she, her pronouns. Um, and today I'm talking about heritage resources and what we can offer you during your academic career here at Western. Um, so heritage resources, Caitlin, if you don't mind jumping to the next slide, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Um, so heritage resources is actually three um, separate units that but what we all do is collect and preserve um, materials, um, historical and primary um, source materials. So things like rare books, manuscripts, correspondence, diaries, audiovisual recordings, oral histories, institutional records, and much more. So we collect um, primary source materials. Um, and I'll get into, um, uh, I have um, a slide with a link to more information about primary sources coming up in just a second. Um, thanks, Caitlin. Um, as I mentioned, we are made, Heritage Resources is made up of three separate units, each one with a slightly different focus. Um, Special Collections is the first unit on the list, um, and there's a link to um, each one of our web pages um, on this slide. Um, Special Collections acquires rare books, personal papers, manuscripts, oral histories, photographs, and other materials that document the history of Western Washington University as well as materials that are related to children's literature, Northwest history, the history of the book, um, fly fishing, Russian and Mongolian culture, Jewish culture and history, and 
some other um, topics. So it's, a, it's got a wide range of materials. Um, so if you're doing research into any of one of those topics, um, definitely check in with them and they may have some great primary source materials um, to, help, um, to help you with your research and with your various projects. University Archives and Records Management is the second on our list today. Um, again, we have a link there um, that you can go to with to go to for more information about what we do. But in brief, the University Archives is the official repository for the um, institutional um, archives of Western. Um, so we collect university records in all sorts of different panels, uh, in, sorry, in all sorts of different formats and from all parts of the institution. So if you're doing research um, on how Western responded to something in its history or um, the history of the university, definitely want to check out um, the university archives. Um, finally, last but definitely not least, we have the Center for Pacific Northwest Studies. Um, the Center for Pacific Northwest Studies um, collects a wide array wide array of materials such as private papers and organizational and business business and institutional records about the region from and when I say region I mean the Pacific Northwest study uh, sorry Pacific Northwest um, and um, ranging from pre-European contact um, to the present. Um, so particular emphasis in their materials is given to doc documenting um, economic development, cultural and social history, environmental history, and other historically significant trends in the uh, region. Um, if you have any questions, you're not even sure where to start, where, you know, if you have a research topic in front of you and you're not sure who to talk to uh, out of those three units, um, you can just send us an email at heritage.resources at www.edu. And um, that I'll bring up a slide at the very end. Well, Caitlin will bring up a slide for me at the very end of my piece with our contact information. But I just want to let you know that we are, um, we're here to help and don't be intimidated. Um, if you just shoot us an email, we will contact everybody who needs to, to, to help you out. So um, don't be afraid of us. Um, Caitlin, if you could go to the next slide. I mentioned primary sources um, and without getting into a whole lot of detail right now because I'll take up the rest of the time, um, I just want to give you guys a link to a video tutorial that we have um, talking about what are primary sources and how do you use them in your research and in your academic career. So if you have questions like that, um, check out this video tutorial. But once again, I say this in every single presentation I ever give, contact us for more help, for more information. Um, that's what we're here for. Um, and Caitlin, if you could jump, I have one more slide. Um, and um, we're right now, um, obviously access to our collections is limited. Um, we're not, our buildings aren't open to the public right now. So, um, however, the good news is that a lot of our content, a lot of the materials that are in um, one of the three units of heritage resources are in our online platform called Mabel. Um, Mabel stands for Multimedia Archives Based Electronic Library. Don't expect you to remember that. Um, cool fact that helps me remember the name is Mabel Zoe Wilson was the first um, librarian of what later became Western Washington University. So we named this great resource after her. Um, if you're interested in using Mabel and finding online content, online primary sources, um, check out this video um, tutorial. It'll kind of walk you through how to use Mabel and I believe um, some of the things that are actually in, uh, in Mabel. All right, Caitlin, I have, I lied, I have one more slide, <laughs> and this is the important slide. This is our contact um, information that I mentioned before. Um, so once again, I just want to leave you with um, the knowledge that we're here to help. Um, if you have a research project or really any type of project that you think um, or you've been told or you think would be um, benefited by the using some cool primary sources, um, come to us. Um, our email is heritage.resources at www.edu. Um, and um, like I said, we can direct you to the folks that you need to talk to. You don't need to figure out which one of the three units to go to. Um, just contact that number, or excuse me, contact us through email 
or you can also leave us a voicemail at the number listed on the screen, 360-650-7534, um, and we'll get back to you um, as soon as possible. So thank you very much, and uh, hopefully we can help you out in your academic career here at Western. And back to you, Caitlin. Okay, thank you so much, Rachel. And thanks to all of the panelists for sharing this awesome information. Um, in case folks are wondering how to find this information again or how to get in touch with folks, we do also have some slides on how you can get in touch with us if you have questions or if you just need, uh, need to know, or if you're not even sure who to get in touch with, we can, we can point you to the right person. And we also have links uh, websites for everyone, all the resources that have been have been talked about today in the slides as well. And the, a link to the slides will be available in um, in the description for the YouTube recording when that's when that's ready. So thanks again for sharing all that info. So now is a good time for some questions for our panelists. So were there any questions from the Q&A or the chat that we can bring up and ask folks? There were a couple of questions that came up. Hi, uh, everyone. My name is Elizabeth. Um, I am she, her. Um, some of these, uh, at least one, I think was answered, but I'm going to kind of ask it again, just to make sure. Um, this is for Katrina in the Tutoring Center. There was just a question about um, scheduling drop-in sessions. So maybe if you just want to address that one more time, so we make sure that that's, that that's covered. Yeah, great. So um, our one-on-one -on -one tutoring will start on the first day of classes, fall quarter. Um, so you can head to our website and check it out. And um, one general piece of advice is I would say, go before you really need it. Go before you're feeling frustrated or worried. And that way you can get used to the system. You can you know, connect with the tutor, connect with a peer advisor, ask a quick question. And then when you are feeling, if you are ever feeling a little worried or stressed or frustrated or you're cramming the night before an exam, that'll be one last thing that you have to worry about because you already know, oh, I know I can just go to the website and click here and this is how it's gonna work. So go to it when you feel like you have the time and you, you feel relaxed enough to, to explore. Um, but yeah, it'll, it'll be open, the one-on-one -on -one tutoring, uh, appointments and, uh, both of those things are open the first day of classes. Any study groups will be announced usually by week one or two. All right, thanks. Um, how do people sign up for study groups? So the, the study groups are going to be announced based on the classes. Not every class has a study group. And so um, usually someone will get an email from me, uh, Katrina Buckman, and it'll say, um, there's a study group for your class and you can click on it here. Another way is also just to go to the tutoring center's main website and again, click on the bottom left of our screen of the screen to uh, connect with a tutor and or connect with a peer advisor and just ask them because they're great resources of information and they um, are always happy to answer questions, even if it's not a specific math or science question, but a question about how to use the resources. Okay, um, next question. Uh, this is for AJ and the STC. Um, so you talked about the trainings, the one-on-one yes. trainings. When did those start? Uh, so the, the Canvas course is actually up now. We won't have our staff back until all the other students come back. So you can expect to see that uh, the STC kind of come back to life that first week when everybody rejoins us digitally on campus. Okay. Um, I'm gonna ask a couple follow-up questions, if you don't mind. Um, so uh, looking at the resource mentioned links, the slide that's up now, um, I do see one thing. I see the subject librarians. Uh, can, can you tell us a little bit about that, maybe, Caitlin? Sure. Yeah, so uh, let me go back to that slide, actually, because I kind of clicked on it before I started talking. OK. Oops. There we go. OK. So the subject librarians here, and I'm just gonna click on this link that's available on the slide. The subject librarians are basically a group of librarians that are dedicated or that work with different subject areas at, at Western. So we actually have three teams that include about two to three librarians, including arts and humanities, which is a team that I'm a part of. 
There's also a team for science, and there's also a team for social sciences and programs, which includes Elizabeth. So one thing that you can do um, if you are running into um, questions around finding research, or if you have a big writing project for a, a class that you're taking, and you'd like a little bit more directed help on finding uh, resources in that subject area that you're, that you're researching, you can contact us. Um, you can get in touch with the subject teams in a lot of different ways. Um, I, I think earlier we had, uh, when we were looking at the tutoring center page, there was a pop-up chat box. You can totally just use that pop-up chat box to get in touch with us via chat and then we'll get, we'll, it'll get directed to the right person. So if you're just curious about uh, finding more resources for your classes, for your subject areas that you're interested in, if you're, if you're wanting to explore a major a little bit more, uh, you can definitely get in touch with the subject teams. All right, those are the only other questions. I'm wondering if any of the other panelists have questions for some of the other panelists. And I've got some too. Um, okay. When we have a moment, but yeah, let's let's see if uh, if other panelists have questions for the other panelists, because this is a chance for us to get to know each other better too. <laughs> I have a question for Stephanie. Yeah. So Stephanie, I know there might be uh, students in the area this fall. Can you talk a little bit about curbside pickup? Yeah, so curbside pickup right now, it is Tuesdays and Fridays from 10 a.m. till noon. And what you do is, uh, like the video showed, you go to our catalog, find the item you want, place a hold on it, and then uh, you can show up anytime between 10 a.m. and noon. Uh, and give the circulation desk a call. Our number is 360-650-3084. And it's also on the library's website and the uh, slide that I was talking about. Uh, you give us a call, we'll check out the item and then we'll bring it down to you. We'll have a little area set up right underneath the sky bridge in between the two buildings. And we just come set your books on a table, go back inside and you grab them. It's real easy, real simple. Yeah. I actually have a follow up question to that, Stephanie. Yeah. How long do I um, how long do I get have them checked out for? Right now, the standard due date for everything is September 23rd. It may be a little longer if you're a grad student or a professor, but that's what we're going with right now. What about during the fall quarter? Then it will be about a six week checkout. Okay, great. So I actually have a question for Kona. Um, so if, for example, I, I know that when I was a student, I had a lot of anxiety around tests. Um, is that something I could contact the DAC about? It is. Um, if you have, um, you know, some students have experience in, if you're coming from a high school environment, um, some students may have been given maybe more informal, informal accommodations. And if that's the case, maybe you were getting a little extra time from instructors, but did not have an official IEP or 504, which are accommodation documents. Um, that's definitely something that you can come chat with our office about. Um, our office is pretty open. So pretty much if you've got a question around, um, is, this a, is this real? Is this not real to me? And typically people's experiences are real to them. And um, there seems to be a lot of question about, well, I talked to I talked to some students who think that, you know, they've they've experienced something for so long they think that's just the way it is, and oftentimes um, they don't realize that oh there is something different um, there is a barrier that I'm experiencing that I've just been kind of putting up with and so um, if you've got questions around that um, say you were uh, had some anxiety around test taking uh, a classic indicator of of that would be uh, something we we often talk about is just not finishing exams. Um, if you're someone who just doesn't finish exams, then that might be something to come talk to our office about and we can help you navigate kind of what's going on. Um, and you might, uh, you know, starting right now in the remote learning setting, I, I know that not as many students will be moving physically to campus, um, but that doesn't mean that your environment where you're at is going to be the perfect environment for remote learning either. And so there might be a, there are different stressors happening that are causing students, um, or family units, different types of anxiety or stress. And so um, if something is, uh, if an anxiety or a symptom of something along those lines or is affecting the way that you're able to participate in the classroom, um, whether that's digitally or in person, that's definitely something you can come chat with our office about. 
Thank you. That's a great question. So, um, there's a follow up question about the DAC, Kona. Um, do so do you have drop in sessions or do the, do people need to make an appointment to come in to see you? Uh, we do either. Um, if in the fall, we're hoping to have uh, the ability to we're trying to streamline the drop in session um, with some video, just kind of like how we're doing right now in Zoom. Um, but basically, if you call our office, you can get transferred to an accommodation counselor potentially right there if you've got an immediate question or if the front desk can't help you. Um, but making an appointment is always great. Just call the front desk. Anyone can make an appointment at any time. We're just as much as a resource for students as we are for other partners on campus as well. So um, it also, if, you're, you know, if your family member has a question, we'd be able to take those appointments as well, though we wouldn't share personal information about students. So that's a little shift from uh, family involvement in a high school setting to uh, a university setting. So, um, but we'll take an appointment for, from anyone. So yeah, just give our offices a call and um, you don't have to have an application completed or anything and we'll be able to, um, I'd be happy to chat with you. Great, thanks. Great. Um, and I actually have a question for, uh, for Pippa from the studio. Um, so can you, so let's say like, let's say I have like a, a draft of a paper and I, I'd really just like someone to take a look at it. Is that something that studio can help with? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people um, send us their drafts through our online send us a draft form. It's very conveniently named. Um, and so what we do um, is um, you'll be able to give us your draft. You can tell us about the assignment. You can tell us about you like questions, things you're concerned about, and we'll respond um, with feedback and strategies that you can use um, focused on either your questions or else something we see like, oh, what about this also? Um, so it, it's, it's a really easy way to pop your pop your assignment into the internet and then the internet will spit something back out two days later and you'll have a, a next step you can take. It's not always two days. Sometimes we're fast and it's only like half a day, but it could be two days. So we like to give, give the range of times. So uh, another question for AJ and the STC um, or and also possibly Stephanie. Um, is the STC or the library checking out any tech this fall, like laptop computers and that type of thing? Yeah, so originally the STC, we had our, our racks and racks of laptops. And because of COVID, we've shifted all that down to classroom services because the first floor of, of Haggard in their area is going to be open. And in the fall, there's going to be a special uh, like checkout schedule and procedure. Um, I, I don't know if that's been released yet of what room is going to be, but it'll be on that first floor and stuff. Right now during the, the summer, uh, they've actually been having like, they've been doing all their checkouts like in a tent outside of uh, Haggard. So they'll be bringing, bringing that back in. Uh, presumably when you know the pacific northwest starts to deluge on us like the day after the term starts um but no so atus uh has most of our our kit but um you can't get it from us you have to get it from classroom services all right thank you that include calculators as well i know stc and the circulation desk and the tutoring center all used to provide calculators um can students get calculators from atus yeah, the, they, they should, because they're going to have our stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, no, so uh, anything that the STC had, or the bigger items, the small bits and bobs, like our cables and stuff, you know, that, that's still locked up on second floor. But the bigger the bigger ticket items, uh, we intend to have in the loan pool for general student use, so. I have a question for Rachel. So Rachel, if a student finds a resource in Heritage, in one of the three Heritage Resources uh, sites, if it's not digitized, can Heritage Resources scan or take a photo and get that information to students? Yeah, so we are doing some limiting, limited scanning um, of resources. I say limited just because um, one little research question can uncover a whole bunch of materials, um, but we can work with you um, to figure out exactly what you need and to um, get the materials scanned to you. Um, it won't be an immediate turnaround, um, but we can definitely do that for you. I have a, another question for Pippa. Um, Pippa, on the uh, research writing studio slide, there was a mention of the studio partners. Um, what are studio partners and how would a student get um, get connected with one? 
Yeah, so studio partners, so normally in the studio, we function on a primarily like a drop-in basis because it's really flexible. People can come and stay as long as they want or as short as they want and ask a question or, or just keep working for a long time. Um, so we created the different like studio partners for people who want to like work one-on-one -on -one with someone for longer amounts of time throughout the quarter so that you can really get to know someone and like focus together on whatever it is that you're trying to tackle. So a lot of times students will sign up for a studio partner if they are, for example, trying to um, develop their writing skills to pass like the standardized test for becoming a teacher, for example, or they might be trying to um, work really hard on an application to a major or um, uh, tackle some challenge that they've been facing for a while. Um, so that tends to be when studio partners can be really useful, but there's no like requirements or anything. So you can request one um, on our website um, uh, even if you just would like to work focused with one person instead of multiple people. Um, yeah, um, I'm not sure if we want to like show the website or, or what, but it's really easy to access. You click on connect with us and then studio partner. I wanted to, this is Elizabeth. I wanted to follow up on that a second. In addition to the studio partners, we also have um, a library practicum called Library 341. It's a practicum in academic literacies. And it's where you can get some personalized help, similar to the studio part, the studio program, except for this is where you have a learning plan that is really developed for your specific needs. Um, it's often designed around your specific classes. So if you have classes that have a really strong or heavy research and writing component, it's a really good um, program to sign up for, class to sign up for. It's one credit. Um, to kind of go along with your other classes. So if you want something that's a little more structured than the studio, than the studio partner that can work, oftentimes people will sign up for a studio partner like halfway through the quarter because they realize they need some specific help. And then they will sometimes migrate into the, and then move into the, the practicum because they realize they need something a little more structured. So they often kind of go, go hand in hand. Yeah, thanks Elizabeth. It's kind of like the informal, formal version, depending on what you want most of the time and what's the most flexible for you. Okay, any other questions for our panelists, from our panelists or from the attendees? One other question that came up that um, we might want to, that I, I think we should address is about student employment. Um, and, uh, I'll just kind of give a, a quick overview. Normally the, the library does employ um, a significant number of student employees. Um, I believe we still be, will be having some student employees uh, in the upcoming fall quarter. I don't know for sure how many. Um, all of our student jobs or student positions are advertised through um, the, the student employment site. So if you are looking for a job, whether it's, it's this quarter or next year, um, the student employment site is, is the place to go to look for um, uh, student employment in the library. Thanks for that, Elizabeth. And I'll do a little uh, plug to both the, the research writing studio and the tutoring center usually do our hiring in the spring for the following academic year. Um, and I will say that one of the things that we look for in our tutoring center future employees is whether you've been to the tutoring center before, whether you've used our resources and you're familiar with them. Um, the tutoring center is definitely not a place like where only struggling students go. There's no stigma attached with it. And there's, you know, sometimes you go when you're struggling, but sometimes you go when you wanna maintain, you know, a really good grade in a class. And, um, and we, we really look for students who understand that struggling is a normal part of, um, of being a student and they get that and they're wanting to support other students who are going through that. Um, so yeah, definitely look if you're interested in, in being a tutor or a study skills peer advisor, um, look for us in the spring and consider dropping by and using our services so you're more familiar with what we do when you do apply. Um, I'll do a little plug for my area too. Uh, I usually hire in the summer around July and we do post uh, through student employment and the jobs I offer at 
the circulation desk. So if you like customer service and helping people, it'd be a perfect place for you. But on the flip side to that, if you hate talking to people and want to be in the stacks all day, uh, I also manage the what we call the return room students, where you can just shelve books until your heart's content and not talk to a single soul. So uh, yeah, I hire in July and hopefully I'll be hiring uh, again whenever the buildings open up. Okay, well, I'll jump on this wagon too. Can I just say ditto from the STC? I mean, we pretty much say the same thing. The only difference is we're currently hiring. Our application actually closes at the end of this week. So if uh, students are are interested in, in working for the STC, obviously remotely, uh, please put in your application. And yeah, bonus points if you've actually been to the STC and know our mission and, and you know, know what we do. The other thing that I want to throw out is uh, kind of a misnomer. Like the STC, you do not have to be a geek to work with us. Um, we we hire across the board. We have everybody from performing arts majors to CS majors to CBE folks. Like we take everybody because we want genuinely people who want to help other people because we see people when they're the most stressed out, which is right after they've gone to the Hackle Research and Writing Studio and have a draft of their paper with all of the resources the libraries provide you and Clippy eats your homework. So, you know, we have to deal uh, more specifically with the human side of technology before we get to the tech side. So if that's uh, an interest of you, do apply to the STC. So that's my shameless plug. Okay, so lots of opportunities to possibly work in the library, the STC, uh, if you're interested. So definitely check those out, keep your eye out. Um, okay, so if there are no other questions, which I'm sure there are tons of questions, um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and we'll make sure that this is up and available on YouTube with all the links that you might need. Um, and thanks again to all of our fabulous panelists. You were wonderful. And thanks for all this great information. Can I say one more thing? Of course. Um, just one more thing I want to add. I always like to end um, with just something fairly simple. And that's that every single person that works in the library, whether you can see them or not, is here because they want to see you, see you as students succeed. And so please don't hesitate to contact us um, at any point when you need help, whether it's the beginning, whether it's at the end, whether you're stressed out, um, we are always gonna be here to help you in some way, shape or form, um, kind of get through, um, especially your first year and especially a very unusual quarter as we start moving into it. Um, so again, please don't hesitate to contact us if you need help. Thank you. Okay.